Again, uh, good evening to everyone. My name is Larry Spring. I'm uh, the North Miami City Manager, your city manager. I'm here tonight accompanied uh, with Arthur Soria, uh, Deputy City Manager. I want to thank Carol Keats for uh, setting this up so we have another uh, opportunity to engage with the community um, with regards to this very important initiative. Um, tonight, um, this kind of set some expectations and maybe some ground rules. We're here to we're here to give you some information. We're here to um, hear back, get some feedback, and try to answer some questions tonight, um, um, so that we can continue. And it's been a, this has been a process. We can continue to uh, work this piece of legislation and, and look at what we're trying to do to ensure that we're satisfying the needs of all the citizens of North Miami. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to my deputy city manager, unless uh, Councilwoman, would you like to make any remarks before we get started? I want to thank our city manager, deputy manager, for allowing us to have an additional workshop. Uh, my aim and my promise was to make this as transparent as possible. I want everybody to know what it is that we're going to, if, the, if it gets, if what we're doing and being asked to do as a council is to put this on the referendum to allow the people to decide whether they want to bond or not. I, I'm, I'm very, haven't totally made up my mind yet, but I feel that people should have a choice of uh, if they want progress in the city. It's, it's not up to me to hold the city back, although you know, a lot of people don't want me to vote for it. Um, that being said, the purpose of this evening is we've got some figures now, they are on the website, of not set in stone, but the projects we are looking at and different um, sections which they'll go over. Uh, the amounts that cost, it's a little bit confusing because there's moving figures, but if you go on the website, there's also a calculator which I requested, so you can put in your assessed value from your taxes and you can figure out at the very maximum if everything was uh, voted for, this is how your taxes will be and what it's gonna cost you for the next 30 years. So this is information. I'll answer questions, but um, uh, both our manager and deputy manager we are here for your questions, so go for it. Deputy manager, uh, our story. It's gonna walk you through just some of the, the, the basic uh, parameters of what we've been doing kind of where we are. I'm going to add some, some things on it. Good evening, everyone. I think this is our sixth meeting now. I think we're in meeting number six. Um, and it's been a, a long process. We've gone through projects. We've gone through prices. We've gone through everything. And we're, you know, back again um, the last meeting. You know, we need to show up some things. Everybody wanted to see the project costs back again. Um, they were there originally. We took them out. Everybody wanted to see them back in. So we would go through it. And basically, what I'm going to do is go through some of the basics of what the projects are. So this is the ordinance. This is actually what Councilwoman Keys was speaking about. This is what we are asking the council to vote for. Um, and the ordinance is uh, 155 million bond payable through debt service or through your taxes, through my taxes. I live in the city as well. Um, so, public facilities. Our first question is public facilities improvements in amount of 86 million 300 thousand. Um, some of the projects would be. Governmental complex, city hall, that's the governmental park complex. Parking garage, community center, senior centers, uh, sports complex, and other park improvements. In this vote, yes or no. And it's very important to understand, you're not coming out saying, uh, it, well, you may be saying no to the bond in general. No to the bond. But there are going to be four questions when you go to the ballot, to, to the polls to vote. And if you like the public facility, you say, hey, we need new facilities, we need a new Walmart Golden Center, we need a new park, we need that. Then for this question, you vote yes. If you say, we don't need affordable housing, we don't need infrastructure, we don't need uh, technology, for those questions, you vote no. 
but each question is a is is definitely a sole source question. It's by itself. So don't look at it as the whole bond. You might like a portion of it. If you hate affordable housing, you hate affordable housing. Vote no. If you hate the public facilities, vote no on that. But vote yes on the infrastructure if that's what you choose. So this is your first question. Public facilities. What do we have in public facilities? Sunkist Road Community Center, Keystone, Griffith Community Center, Gwen Margolis Community Center, the Mocha Expansion, the Nomi Center, that's City Hall, uh, Ben Franklin Park, Pepper Park, and Stadium Upgrades. Now these are the base projects. These are the conceptual estimates. We hired estimators to go over these and come up with the prices for them. The majority of community, the community centers will become two-story facilities. They will no longer be one-story facilities. And I think that was one of the misconceptions when people saw the price. Why is such a big price tag? They're two-story facilities. We never said that, and we apologize for that. They're two-story facilities. Um, any of you guys go to the chamber lunches or you go to anything, they're always in line of shorts. We don't have one facility you can sit everybody in a nice facility to have something nice. This will have nice facilities. And then increase the parking as well because you know out here we have no parking. So this is your first question. That's your first question, public and recreational facilities. Yes, sir. Um, well, in that last meeting, one of the suggestions and when it was when you were talking about the uh, community centers uh, was to actually come up with one large community center that would accommodate the entire city. I mean, you're doing four, you can even, do, if you don't want to do one, do you give any consideration to doing two new community centers instead of redoing these four? So, and we started it off as, you know, we've been going through the community and looking at what staff thought was a good recommendation and through these meetings that that process has been fine too. Even as we go through month, uh, through Tuesday, we still have the opportunity to fine tune the scope of any of these projects. Because at the, and it's gonna sound really weird when I say this, that is a name and a number allocation. Um, and we gave our estimators, uh, we had to give them some assumptions to work with. Those assumptions can actually, when we get into the, the nitty gritty of getting to these projects and scoping them, can be modified from what we talked about and from some of the things I've heard from the community via our elected officials and uh, and our direct meeting. So at the end, we could conceptually end up at all right. We're going to do X, but right now we are we're at Y. The other thing that's important um, this 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 is a general obligation bond, which means every single taxpayer is going to be contributing to the payment of this. So we felt it was important for fairness and equity that each community around the entirety of North Miami receive some direct benefits in their in their in their neighborhoods. So that's the other reason. So yes, ma'am. Question um, so when we vote, we're actually voting to approve the amount of money and not necessarily the projects that are there because if you just said they may change. Correct. And I was going to address that after we went to the slide. Because because there are word limitations and legal word limitations on what can be listed in the actual ballot question, you'll see down at the bottom the explanations, park and recreational facilities, <coughs> government complex, parking. So we're putting the elements, the descriptive elements, but yes, the scope of these could change. And we will do that working with the community. One of the things that we haven't said yet publicly, but I have talked to all the elected officials, and I think it addresses um, some concerns that I've, I've read, I've heard. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to make the last meeting because I was in Tallahassee fighting for drainage money. Um, we, we understand that there is a concern and a fear about, okay, what happens if this elected body is not there in the future? How do we safeguard and make sure that what we thought we were going to get, if you thought you were going to get a brand new Gwen Margolis Center, why five years from now is it not happening? Well, one of the things I'll be introducing when we present the, the, the ordinance on Tuesday 
is the requirement that we have a uh, citizens bond oversight uh, board. That board would be set up just the same way the city of Miami has it, uh, Jackson Health Health Systems has it, um, the county has it. It'd be a board of citizens with for, for, you know uh, accounting backgrounds, engineering backgrounds, architectural backgrounds that can say, wait a minute, when you when they when they approved it and based on the stuff they wanted, we talked about it being X. And so when, before we actually spend any money, we would go through the advisory board and get their approval. Um, and then it would go, each project as it comes through actually still has to go in front of the council. So it's not like you approve this tomorrow, we, you, well, they're gonna approve the ordinance, then you guys approve at the ballot box, yes or no. And then from there, it's not like we get to do whatever we want. Each project, because we have to select the design company, in, you know, to design this, we have to build, uh, hire construction people to build these things, and every single aspect of that, each and every time, has to go back to the council. So that's part of the safeguard that we there. All right, one more. Um, did you guys? Is there any limitation as to why you're only doing this in four categories? Um, given the 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 notional amount of the total bond. So, you know, and, and the type of pro projects that we're looking at, um, when working with our bond council, we thought four was the right, based on the breakout. Because well, um, at one point, I think we had six, six different categories, and we took a look at it, and it's like, all right, that doesn't necessarily make sense, because all of these are facility-related. Well, so, but, all right, for example, this is more than half of your total money here, right? Yep. And you got a couple of things in there that's probably going to kill this whole project. So, if, if you want to get a feeling for what people might stay with, you might want to break this one down instead of one, if you still want to do that. Well, keep in mind, because of transparency, we're not supposed to create a category of dislikes versus likes. We're supposed to. Well, you got a couple of killers in there that are going to destroy this one. Sure. Well, we're, we're here to talk about get your feedback. Right. So. It's awesome. Yes. How many people would be on this before they be Um, we haven't I have not gone into that detail yet. I'm recommending it as a as a, a administrative recommendation to the council. The council will decide. Most of them that I, I've actually I actually sat on the uh, City of Miami's Homeland Defense Bond Oversight Board and I wanna say we had like nine members on the board. Um, but and those individuals were I'm a CPA, so they had accountants, they had engineers, they had uh, construction people, architects, um, you know, some some citizens, you know, activists, if you will, all on the board, so that they get a, a full uh, full level of, I guess, accountability, if you will, from different perspectives, because they look at not just are we doing what we said we're doing, but they're also looking at Hey, wait a minute. Why? Why is this design uh, ten million dollars for a building that only costs thirty million dollars? And they would question things of that nature. They would question things like, "All right, we're getting ready to move forward with this building. The, the budget office. Are you guys preparing to budget for the maintenance costs in the operating budget for that building because it's going to come online in 2021?" So it's a it's a it's a, a number of questions that that board will be charged with, but it's still you, open. What do you determine the amount of money for a category? Yeah, that was uh, allocated for each center. Um, it was based on we 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 uh, engaged uh, AECOM, which is an engineering firm, firm. We gave them some very, and when I say basic, very very basic assumptions on scope, and they they took it back with their S their professional estimators. <laughs> and came up, all right, if you're going to do this, this will cost approximately X based on the price of concrete, steel, um, a, a percentage for design, so on and so forth. So that's how we arrived at those numbers. So what is it about Sunkist Road that makes it less, uh, need less allocation? Do you um, remember your question, please? Yes, what is it about Sunkist Grove Community Center that um, makes it uh, receive the least amount of allocation. I'd have to go back to the detail of my my 
the high level answer is the size of the the size of the facility as it as it exists now and and the scope. So the second question, um, infrastructure and sustainability, $43 million, $43.2 million. Um, projects included sidewalk, street resurfacing, landscaping, lighting, green space, drainage, and transit-related improvements. Again, this is its own separate category. If you're approving and you're, you like the infrastructure, we ask you that you vote for the infrastructure question. Um, and here are the breakdown of some of the infrastructure sustainability projects. You have Arch Street Basin, um, North and South drainage improvements, Keystone Point seawall installation, retrofit city-owned seawalls, install living shoreline, elevate utility outfall infrastructure, acquiring repetitive lost properties, drainage improvements, additional drainage improvements, city-wide streets and sidewalks, and transit drainage improvements. Um, the transit village improvements, everyone's familiar with the train symptoms will be coming. It would actually be for a train stop to be mm -hmm. right here on 125th Street um, at, the, at the station. And $7.5 million does not build in China's train stop. We have, and we do have money budgeted in the CRA, that's part of the CRA plan, um, to match this $7 million to build a transit station. Um, yes, ma'am. The problem on Griffin Boulevard, where the surge was backing up, is that covered under yes, this? Yes, that is. That is covered. And that could, that's a combination of possibly acquiring properties as well as the additional drainage improvements. And, and I want to address that one specifically because outside of where we're asking for. Um, some allocation of funds from the bond to help deal with that issue. But right now, we're in the middle of trying to deal with the issue. We have been working with the county because of their construction that they're doing at the end of the block there. Um, we put some manhole monitors in there so that we can now know when the, the water elevations are coming up and um, done some internal assessments. And as soon as they finish their project, we're we had already planned and made a commitment to the um, individuals that live on that, that particular section of the block mm -hmm. that we're going to have our own engineering study done to try to come up with what the solutions are and then utilize these ones to implement that solution. So we're working. The other point I want to, I should make, keep in mind, and th this is a, I, I won't call it a technical thing. Um, you, you all probably experience this in your own houses with your own personal budgets. You know, you have a list of things, you know, your, your city is your personal house, your individual house. And in, in taking care of your house, there are, you know, the, the, the paint might need to be repaired or a bathroom might need to be fixed. You have all of these things that come up over time that happen. Well, the same way the city has all of these things that come up over time that happen. And sometimes we, we um, have the money immediately available to do it. And in the case of a homeowner, they may have a line of credit pledged against the value of the house to help deal with those things as they come up, um, insurance and other things. City's the same. We have a, a list of things that happen every day. You know, the Griffin issue, um, as you pointed out, has been around for a while. It's been around for a while, and, and we've been tr doing little things to deal with it. Um, but now it's time to maybe draw on the line of credit on the house and, and make the real uh, necessary improvements that's, that's needed to resolve the issue. Yeah. Yes, 
we need to make as a city. Um, many of them are external and things that you see and you grab and they're tangible to you as a, as a citizen. A lot of them, a lot of the other ones are not so tangible. Right now, we're busting out of the scenes at City Hall. One, two, City Hall is a very old building. And I personally have had a pipe burst over my desk and wash out my office, where we had to go then move into a, a closet space for six months while it was repaired. So I know you didn't, you didn't see that happen. But we, we had to deal with it, so I would only submit that we're the same level of uh, maintenance need and in investment need that you see externally. We also have an intern. Don't you think, as part of the infrastructure, water and sewer should be included in this? I mean, you could spend $43 million on water and sewer, you could spend $155 million in water and sewer, and you don't even address it. Uh, there's a reason. It we, be a good one. <laughs> if you let me answer, I'll give it to you. Uh, we have a water and sewer utility where we're actually through the the your utility bill. We have been raising capital or for reinvestment into our water distribution system. In addition, before I got to the city, the city also went to the state of Florida uh, state revolving fund and borrowed money to replace the entire water plant and do water projects. We do drainage and, and water projects all year round. We just approved one for what was that, $15 million a couple of months ago. So that is the reason why you don't see as much, you don't see that here focused in this particular finance. The $7.5 million for the uh, transit village, is that for the high speed, uh, the high speed train? It is the, it would be for an investment in a in a station around the it would actually be for a tri a tri-rail stop. A tri-rail stop. Oh, yes. Not the, the the bright line is going to the bright line train is coming through here. They have talked to us about us having additional stops along the way because you know right now the train is actually was supposed to service from uh, the Orlando Airport to downtown Miami with four four major stops one in uh one in orlando one in west palm beach one in fort lauderdale one in miami in addition to that they're looking for a local commuter train that would do more stops along the way that train would stop like in aventura see the north miami probably hollandale beach and you know other interest points along the way midtown miami and then end up in downtown so but this is for tri rail it's for a local commuter train. Because the rail, they're using the same rail line right now. When, when are we getting that? Uh, when, has a commitment been made uh, so, that that's gonna be built? So the train is actually built. The, I don't know if you've gone downtown, the downtown station is almost done. They've been operating the train between the Fort Lauderdale and West Palm because those two so stops are done. The right line. Right. And my understanding is they don't want to uh, construct anything in North Miami. Uh, they do want to build something up uh, at 151st Street where you've got That's that you, you've got the high school. That's in North Miami too. There, I, I personally met with the principal of FEC and they do have interest in the station right there. So let me ask one question. So just hypothetically, so there's $43 million here, and let's say they built it on 151st Street outside of the North Miami property, and, did, and that project didn't happen. Would that money then be removed, or does it get rolled into some other project? It could be two things. We can decide not to, if we know it's not coming, it's not on the horizon, we would not issue the debt at all for that project. So it would never happen. So you wouldn't have the burden, or via a, uh, a process, a legislative process, they could do a, um, a project modification, if you will, and use that that available allocation on one or several other projects. We're going to move to the next one. <coughs> we'll, we'll have your, we'll have your 
So the third question is technology. $5.4 million for technology in the city. Automatic license plate readers, citywide servers, Wi-Fi equipment, EOC equipment, emergency operations equipment, and police technical equipment. An amount of $5 million. Um, and basically the license plate readers, everybody knows are the things that read the city interest fee interest rates to pick up and know who's coming in our city and who's leaving our city. Um, the excellent tools for police officers. Citywide servers, Wi-Fi equipment, extended Wi-Fi in some of our community centers. If you sit out in the plaza of the community center, you can use the Wi-Fi and the citywide servers also in City Hall. Um, and then police technical equipment in the amount of five point four million dollars. Yes, sir. Uh, the license plate readers, is that inclusive of the police vehicles with the readers or is um, it separate? It's not separate. Okay. But, but we are are we doing something with the police now? With the I police? believe so. Okay. I believe so. Yes, we are. Yes. And your last question, affordable housing in the amount of twenty million dollars. Um, projects include an acquisition and construction of affordable housing, including both single and multifamily projects. Um, and again, they're all single projects, and you would vote yes or no for the projects. Now, what would a timeline look like um, if this was approved? We're going to get into the finances of it afterwards. The, uh, the manager will speak on that. Um, so, the timeline. Um, the second reading, it's already been one reading. Yes, ma'am? We can talk about it after once we get done. Want to talk about it? I mean, what's, what's your question? The one, the one, the All right. Yeah. In, in 2007, when we did the master plan with Charlie Siemens planning organization, well, one of the things he noted at the time, um, there was a push from the, uh, uh, the mayor to have a strong affordable housing element in the master plan. And in all the hearings, when these issues were discussed, the planner's opinion was that North Miami had a lot of affordable housing in its basic housing stock. And if you look every Sunday in the neighbors that give the median prices of homes by communities, you see that North Miami average homes are something like 120,000. It's, it's in line with Miami Gardens, Opelika, Florida City. So that we are a city of many single family homes that are affordable, truly affordable. So what I'm wondering is why, knowing that first, number one, we're gonna have CRA monies flowing in from Solomia that could be used to rehab in our black areas, why do we need a $20 million affordable housing bond when we have existing stock of a very affordable housing. That, that question um, really, honestly, is a, it boils down to a policy. It's a policy question. Um, I don't sit on the board, so I don't, I don't decide what the policy is. But I, I will tell you as someone who is uh, quite a bit of experience in economic development issues. Um, Miami, and I'm saying Greater Miami, inclusive of North Miami, is a very interesting place. We are the, both the richest and one of the poorest communities in the country still. Um, and working with our county uh, housing professionals, uh, one of which is a former assistant secretary of HUD who's now here, um, and with my staff, we've recognized, not just in North Miami, there is a huge uh, def uh, deficiency in affordable housing throughout the county, <coughs> inclusive of North Miami. Um, I've heard numbers as high as we need 100,000 units of additional affordable housing. Now, can we, with all the money, with a lot of money, and I would say it, in hyperbole, with all the money world probably couldn't build all of those in fast enough anyways, right? Now, this is a general uh, question about affordable housing. So how would, how would we deploy $20 million? You talked about existing stock. We do have existing stock of affordable, affordable units 
in North Miami. But if you have you gone into some of those buildings lately? Have you seen the 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 the, the disrepair, um, the need for improvement? Because one of the initiatives in our housing policy is not just building, but also preserving what you're saying, the housing that we have. The other thing we, we're looking at is, you know, we're partnering with the private sector, if you will, in looking to build strategic projects around North Miami, um, where we see that need and, and preserve. And I think a lot of you already know, through the city's allocation as is, and like you just pointed out, the CRA, we are already investing in some, some rehab and actually required it to be new. Um, we, uh, for me, the, the need is there. The need exists. You know, we can go before we spend the first dollar out of here. We could go and do a needs a full drill down needs assessment. But like I referred to earlier, we had the Urban Land Institute here with professionals from all around the world, and they say the <laughs> need investment, further investment in affordable housing. Um, you know, so it's 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 there. And, and for me, again, I'm not a policy maker. I think it is a, a wise investment. Your neighboring city just did a hundred million dollars in a bond referendum. And I know people, oh well I don't I shouldn't be taxed to help someone else. I, I get that, but you know we have we have a need. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I was curious since you raised the uh, the urban uh, land institute study, but if they make any recommendations around the use of mixed income uh, housing, uh, yes. and that is a policy issue. Absolutely. So is this contemplated in this? we our bond our bond council has written the question so that we could actually pull that off. So what that means on a mixed income basis. Say we have a, a private developer who's coming in to build a market rate project. We can go to that developer and say, hey, I want you to give me 10% of these units. We will just subsidize those units and have, make them available to individuals that fall within a certain income level. Usually, um, 120% of AMI. And that takes you from low, low, low to workforce. Mm -hmm. So, but. Did you guys know in Florida and Miami, unlike Chicago, New York, and other metropolitan cities, there's not been one mixed income building produced in the state of Florida? Does it mean we have to stop I, I didn't say, I believe in it, but. If I may follow up on the affordable housing, but first off, uh, as, as you pointed out yourself, a lot of our housing stock is, is really in deplorable condition. Much of it is 50, 60 years old, and it's really hard to salvage at this point. Much, much of it, I don't know if people realize, uh, you may see something that has 50 units to it, and if you were to redevelop it at some point, it might be 20 units. So you go, hey, why don't they redevelop it and do something bigger, better, nicer? Our own zoning has stifled that in many, many parts of the city. Here, I don't see a solution where we're saying, Let's give an opportunity for the the uh, the decrepit housing stock to be rejuvenated. We're going to pump in twenty million dollars, which actually isn't that much. Yeah. You spread it across the city; doesn't really do a great deal, and yet we'd still be stuck with this aging housing stock and the problems that go along with it. The counterpart to that is maybe we take some of that and allow it to grow further, and say, okay, beyond the regular zone, you want to go a little bit higher. The bigger and better, you're going to pay something back into the city, eh? some type of tax or something that's levy that can go into a housing fund for affordable housing. And it's sort of a win-win situation rather than squeezing the existing population. It's it's looking to the air rights up above and taking advantage of that. Cool. Um, we're going to move on to the timeline. Um, we've already had the first reading of the the question, which happened on January 9th. And the second reading will happen on Tuesday, February 13th. Um, if it does get passed by our council on the 13th, we will look at April 24th being election day. Um, there will be a, a special election which will happen 
on that Tuesday, April 24th, that you would actually have to go to the the polling site to place your uh, vote, or if you do absentee ballot, it's safe. Yes, ma'am. I and I'm sure a lot of people are wondering this. The cost actually will be somewhere around between ninety and a hundred thousand dollars. Well, the, the one thing I will tell you, um, if you, if you, if you piggyback it on the election, you really you're going to lose control of the election. Or the people who actually come to these meetings, the sixty thousand residents in the city. Every meeting we've had, we've had maybe 50 people show up. So if you do go to a general election, um, all of your concerns that you have, and you put on a big election, everybody comes out, those people have no idea of your concerns that you had. So they still have a right to vote. They have a right to vote, which is fine. They're going to get the notice that it is going to be an election. But what I'm saying, if everybody comes out, then it's... <clears throat> But we, we have chosen a special election for the bond. Most bonds are done on special elections. Um, the next timeline you see here, if it is approved, if the referendum is approved, we will be looking at somewhere around October 9th, which would be the closing of the bonds. Mm -hmm. And then I'll let the man take over. Um, I want to thank Councilman L. Keyes for hosting this tonight. Thank you. To give voice for everyone. Um, why can't we do an August 28th election? The, the Democratic and Republican parties would have primaries on this day and it would save the city residents. I don't care if it's a penny or it's $250,000. We save money that can go back into maybe providing reading programs for little kids at the public library, number one. Number two is, is this is being shut down the city, the city residents votes too quick. I think we haven't done a full analysis of what this community needs. And what this community needs is the water and sewer pipes to be replaced. Thank you, Ms. Manager, for addressing the water plant and for the issues over there. But there are pipes here in this city. There's many over Memorial Drive, I mean, over Memorial Dr Drive, going in Boulevard, that the sewage is coming up, and the county and the city is pointing fingers at each other. We need to address the actual water mains and the sewer pipes in this city because you can't have any development, you can't have the buildings go up, you won't have no businesses come in here or any investors if you don't have the, in, the basic infrastructure, which is the water and the sewer to handle this. You can do the sidewalks, you can do the street lamps, you can do everything, but you know what we're going to, what's going to be done? Is after we do it, we pass this bond issue, we're going to have to rip up all of this and then do the water and sewer pipes. Um, so we're going to continue on to the to the to the next phase, which is vastly important as well. You know, how how is this thing structured? How much is it going to cost um, individuals um, based on their their assessed values? Um, if if I if you need me to give you a definition, um, let me know because I'm going to be talking through some very technical terms at this point. What I have up on the screen, oh, and let me give my disclaimer, our, our financial advisor ran a, uh, a bond run, what we call a bond run or a bond scenario, based on some assumptions that I gave. This, the assumptions are we would issue a, a total $155 million. Um, it would be issued in four tranches. And if you look here, we see sources and dates. We would do $40 million. And I had this run earlier, so you know, it doesn't exactly match with the timeline you see. But, um, but assume $40 million this year, this fiscal year, or this calendar year. Another 45 in 2020. Another 45 in 2022. And the final piece in 2024. Now you probably ask, well, why are you splitting it up like that? Well, a big thing, and I know it's something that is of concern to some citizens because it was brought up today in some in the meetings with some of our elected officials. In order to be able to build what we're talking about building, 
It's not going to be the city manager project managing the build of the Keystone building. It's not even going to be the parks director. We will have to have construction companies, construction project managers, um, engineers that build all the time to project manage these projects. So in order to have all of that happen, we need to get prepared to get there. So that's why you see just a small amount initially. The other reason is if you issue debt, the IRS, because we're going to be issuing tax exempt bonds um, based on the IRS tax code, if you issue the debt too soon, or excuse me, you don't spend the debt down, usually it's a 36 month time frame from the time you issue it, you risk putting the, the city in an arbitrage situation. So what is arbitrage? You cannot earn more in interest with the cash sitting in the bank than you, you're paying out. When that happens, it could trigger uh, a, a tax consequence, which means we'd have to come back to the citizens and say, hey, we screwed up because we didn't spend it down for any time, and now you're paying at what you thought you were going to be paying back at 4.7 or 4.8 percent is now going to be 6 percent, and you guys have to pay the 2 percent. Now, how are you? How are we good with this? Well, your manager used to be the CFO of the City of Miami, and after I got there, they did something foolish. They went and issued 150 million dollars all at once with not a staff person, not a design plan, nothing on the shelf. And they almost got there, but we quickly got in and turned the situation around. We're planning, we're going to plan this thing out to do it the right way. And do I need to go and rush to the market? No, I don't. If the citizens approve this, we're going to do it methodically and the right way to ensure and safeguard every step of the way. So. Back to the bond. So those are the three. They they are referred to as tranches. You see up, see the tranches uh, um, identified at the top. So those are and they're just considered draws. We have a uh, we would have a referendum approval or a voters electors approval to issue up to 155 million dollars, and then each tranche we go. The other thing to keep in mind. Each time we go to issue or do a draw, so those are each four different bond transactions where we go price in New York on a, on a trading desk to the public. Typically, these bonds will be sold to institutional buyers at the high level and then remarketed on the secondary market where you go to your Raymond James or your financial advisor and buy them. We would typically sell them to large banks and large insurance companies and pension funds. So. All of the deals that I've done, and I've done um, well in excess of probably close to um, $750 million in transactions myself, every single time we oversubscribe. And that, that had to do with the team and the structure of the deal. Um, and I'll have you know that whenever investors in other parts of the country and the world, when they see the word Miami, whereas, whether it's Miami-Dade County, uh, Miami School Board, North Miami, North Miami Beach. When they see Miami, it is a it is a good brand, and I've seen that time and time again. So the statistics. Assuming that we would issue the debt in the middle of this year, um, our our financial advisor, um, you know, on their trading desk, figured that our um, interest cost would be approximately, um, net interest cost would be 5% or 5.0054, uh, which is that you see the net interest cost there. You see the true interest cost, which is all in, which includes uh, uh, issuance costs and things, and you see the arbitrage yield that I referred to earlier. We can't, we could not invest the proceeds and exceed that gain on the, on the money and get in trouble. Average life of the bond. 20, uh, 21.9 years. So if this is a 30 year bond, why is the average life less than 30 years? It's because as some of the coupons that are sold or the pieces of the bond within the 40 million, not, all, not every single one of them is 30 years in life. Some of them are five years, 
some are 10 years, some are 15, and that's all mixed into the total issuance to get to this year. Is that, does that mean it's a variable rate bond? No, it is not. This is a level debt service fixed rate bond that we're issuing. Nothing fancy about these. Um, county, states issue these all day. And we would not, we would do the normal, regular, I call it uh, peanut butter and jelly bond. So nothing fancy. I know people, all the, the variable rate bond market some years ago went upside down and they were repricing one monthly at 14%. Guess what? City of Miami had one of those. It was a pension bond. We had to deal with it, but it was issued in the 80s. <laughs> not, not now. Question. Yes. When were the, when were these numbers put together? How June, long ago? Uh, about, this one was, I'm going to say less than 30 days ago. Less than 30 days. And, and again, if you go to the website and click on the financial, there's a statement there that says, these are assumptions. We will not know what the price is until we get the day of the pricing in the market. And what I've seen a lot of times, I talk to you about the, um, the, there being more buyers than supply that we have to sell. When that happens, like supply and demand, our interest rate plummets and it gets cheap. Each time we go to issue the debt, we will go to the city council and say, hey, we're getting ready to issue the first $40 million. City council, based on the advice of not manager, but our outside financial advisor, our finance director, our manager, our bond council, we want to set, they give, they give us parameters to go by. You can only issue 40 million in this piece. The interest rate cannot exceed X amount and you know timing, maturity of the bonds, they give us a couple of uh, different details that we cannot see. That is my authorization when I go to New York to sell the bonds. If it goes outside of that box and we're trying to sell, guess what happens? Either we cancel the sale or we have to convene an emergency council meeting for them to approve whatever that difference is. In my 10, 15 year career issuing municipal debt and much longer buying it, I've only seen it happen one time. And that's when the county sold the Marlins bonds, a piece of the Marlins bonds. Yeah, but so, during, that, during that 15 year period, interest rates were coming down. You, you know well that we're in an environment now where rates are starting to move up. And over time, these, the, 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 the net interest cost for these bonds is going to be higher. Well, I don't know that because I don't have a crystal ball to tell you that. And my FA ran these numbers assuming a future interest rate, not the interest rates that are here today. So this is already higher than what we are dealing with right now. So, and and I should say that I should have backed up. All of this, these statistics and things where you're gonna see, particularly when we get into the millage rate calculations, we try to use our most conservative assumptions. You know, could it go up? Yeah, it could. Could it go down? Yeah, it could. We don't know right now. We have an idea because I could go and give you how, how municipal bond rates have moved. And what we'd be issuing is a insured AAA rated credit, which is the best debt instrument you can get on the market right now. Now, you ask, well, how do you do that? Well, you buy insurance, you pay a couple, 20 grand, and you get insurance on your issuance to get the credit rate. Wait first, please, sir. Uh, are we going to have any sinking funds or any call options on these bonds? Um, so typically, I'd have to. We'd have to get into the structure a little bit later. I couldn't answer that question right now. I would tell you my intent again would be for it to be a, just a straight, straight amortized bond. Um, when I said level debt service, nothing, nothing exotic or weird. Um, there may be a market reason why the FA might suggest we um, have call provisions in the bond because of those are pricing better at the time. Um, and this is, 
if you've ever been in the in the trading room or in the trading desk, I actually worked for the company that Royal Bank of Canada. Royal Bank of Canada. I worked for their predecessor at Paris Baker Watts. Okay. So you you know I understand. It's like it's like watching paint dry when you're waiting for your <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I, we, we'd have to get into the mall, you know, be closer to the actual transaction for me to determine that. Okay, yes. clarification on some very basic questions. You said it's a 30 year bond, but the average lifespan might be approximately, approximately 21 years. Um, would the citizens, a uh, homeowner per se, would they be paying for 21 years or throughout the 30 years? No, they're gonna, you, you're gonna have a debt a debt unless we somehow extinguish it early. You'll have a debt flow for 36 years. The reason why it's 36 years. The reason why it's 36 years, I just showed you. We, we're issuing it in pieces. The last piece will be issued six years from theoretically today. But that's why you have 36 years and not 30 years. Okay. Now, if, if the city stayed stagnant, and it was just the exact same number of people in homes and such like that, I guess that would be a set amount of assessment that would then be consistent for that 36 years, correct? Mm -hmm. What happens as the city grows and other, let's say there's rejuvenation of some sort or there are additional housing stock that comes in, how does that factor in? When, when Solomia comes on and it's 20-25% uh, of our city in terms of uh, living population when it comes online, will that then drop the amount of this, uh, of the individual assessments by 2025%. So, you guys, if you came here, you should have each received. Is it going to be 
I only use what I actually knew. I know because I have a development agreement and a 200 year lease that we get payments on every month that we're going to have sold me. They already have four buildings under construction right now. So at the very least, the first probably 10 years of their number is, will be realized. All right, a lot of us uh, are older and we've already been through one period of time. And I'm not going to be a writer 30 years in front of this project. So as you take into account, those of us who will be selling our homes that we've had for 40, 50 years, that when these homes, when these homes sell, the taxes on the, uh, just the new purchase are going to be much, much higher. So is that... Factored? So that's factored into that, three, that average 3% growth rate because that 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 three percent growth rate takes into account buildings getting demolished and, and no longer being there, new construction, additions that people put on their homes that in, increase value and so on and so forth. So yes, that's that's been included in the assumption. Um, going back to oh, sorry, so I kind of. I got ahead of myself answering Mr. Kreptel's question. You see down there now where it says par amount. You see par amount, bond proceeds, total interest. So I'm going to issue 155 million, and the total interest over the life of the bond. So that's from the first coupon date to the last maturity, and you see uh, up in the uh, on the top there. You see first coupon date August 1st. 2018, that actually happens to be my birthday. And the last coupon, February 1st, 2054. That will have us pay $170,519,833.33 based on these estimates. The average debt service, as you see down there, so on average, if you average the 36 years, each year, you'll be paying a total debt service of 9.1 million. And at the height of the bond, which is usually right in the middle of it, the highest one, your highest single year debt payment is $10.8 million for 155. So those are some of the statistical things. Did we put, is this one on the website? Oh yeah, they just have them. So. Yes. So, if you go to the website, you see here under financial documents, so I'll go back out. If you go to the face of the of our bond website, this is what you'll see. Click on financial documents, and you see the disclosure. The financial information presented is based on estimates and project projection assumptions. Actual costs interest calculation and millage assessments will not be final until the actual issuance of the debt and the actual tax millage are officially assessed. I get paid to give you that. You close it, it'll take you to the basic page and you click on that first line there, North Miami Geo combined, and it'll bring up the document that we were just looking at. Um, How much are you going to pay for this? So let's go to the calculations. All right. How do we get to the calculators? Let's go here. Click on to the, the bond website. It's going to bring you to financial documents. Click on financial documents, that same pop up will come. And then you go to general obligation debt service village calculations. Click on it, and it'll bring you to the calculator. And as I just stated earlier, Mr. Perpetel, you have two calculations, two calculators. One, general obligation debt service village calculation on 50. 155, and then the second one, same thing, 
with the assessed value impact of solar media development and annexation. So you would go click on the assessed value and put in the number. Who was it earlier that said, he said our average is 120,000. Hundred twenty thousand will be paying two hundred and twenty-four dollars a year on average. So that's on top of what you're assessing from the operating village. And let me be clear: you'll now have two separate villages. You're going to have a your normal general fund village that you now see. And then you'll have a debt millage. Mm -hmm. Typically in the bond covenants that the city will have to execute with the bank, our underwriting bank, it'll state that we can only assess <coughs> the amount needed to pay the debt service for that year and not any more. So that's very important to remember. Um, I'm going to do the same. Well, I think this one's all. Change. So I'm going to change. Now this is the same one, or the, put that same assessed value in with the impact of Solomia. Solomia, which we know is happening, $153.97 a year at $120,000 of assessed value. That's the average over the life of the bond. So you see there's a huge impact um, with the impact of the additional growth that the, the city will hopefully, not hopefully, we don't realize some of it. Um, I will tell you, and this is where I shoot myself in the foot, I'm transparent and I'm conservative. I will tell you to always look to the, the other one, the more conservative one. Um, I've been doing financial projections on, I've done financial projections on every major um, public infrastructure project in downtown Miami. Stadium, James L. Knight, Paratungle, the Port Tunnel, Performing Arts Center, everything. And I, I always, always, it's an, and it's important, I choose the conservative route because things happen. Or they don't have. <laughs> yes, sir. You guys have a plan B if all or part of this doesn't pass. So, as with anything, but I hate to tell you this, if you ask for the public record, I will send it to you. But I'm not going to show it to you tonight. Yes, we've looked at various other scenarios, which is the wise thing to do. I've looked at a scenario that would assume that the technology and the affordable housing doesn't get passed. I've looked at a scenario that your councilwoman demanded that I do, which is to reduce this to $100 million. Now, I don't know the categories, but mm -hmm. reduce the entire issuance to $100 million. And then I just did a silly one, which is $50 million. Um, and I say silly because when you look at what we listed there, it, it wouldn't get much done. Um, the calculator is on the website, and it's there. It's an averaging again, and if you want, if you want to see those bond runs or those millage calculations, um, feel free to contact my office or put a public record in through uh, my staff, and we will provide those with you. I, the reason why I don't, I'm not sharing with, sharing those with you is not because I'm hiding. It's because, again, I'm being conservative. We are asking for this. So I don't want anybody to be confused. Oh, I saw, I saw a package that was 100. What happened? I don't, I don't want to confuse the public. I have, uh, and being very transparent, everybody's read about the city of Miami's issues with the SEC. I was heavily involved in that process, and it was four and a half years of hell for me personally. Um, but because I do my job the right way, I tell the truth. I came out clean and actually became the federal government's witness against the city and an individual that was my co-worker. 
So I take disclosure and numbers very serious. Yes, sir. This is a lot of groceries, right? I mean, it's, we've got such a broad, a broad array of projects. Who's in charge of prioritizing what gets done? City council. Your city council. And do they do that as a, I mean, you're going to be asking for these trunks of money every two years. So they would, I would have an item that we bring where we would talk about what are we prioritizing. So I've seen this done a couple of different ways. You know, the county in 20, 2006 issued like, or they, we approved as county, all county residents, you know, like $6 billion of projects over, and they still haven't even, I don't even think they've issued half the money yet. And that was 12 years ago. Um, there were categories, and the, the county commission decided, well, I have some pet projects in my district that we want to advance those first. And then there were so many different categories. Oh, the city of Miami was a category in that bond because we were trying to use that money to leverage it to do other things. So we asked for our money first. The finance team over there will get together, get all those requests, figure out what the need is, and then that's what they'll take to market as the first thing. In our case, and I referred to it earlier, we need to we need to beef up staff a little bit because we need to have um, more hands on deck to again help oversee this this process. But two, we need to make sure we have. Um, you, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this term from the the. President Bush and the President Obama stimulus package. Shovel ready projects, we have to get our projects shovel ready, which means they have to be designed. Mm -hmm. um, we have to, our procurement process takes six months or, you know, when you're doing complex projects, so we have to bid out to the construction company that ultimately would build it. All of that stuff we want to start doing ahead of time. Now, one of the things being transparent, typically what I'll do, or what I would recommend, I would go to the city council and say, before I even issue the 40 million of debt here, and this is, if you approve this as voters, this is allowable after you after you approve it, I would go to this, probably go to city council and say, look, I don't want to take down any money just yet. We're going to keep our eyes on the market. We're going to be watching the market and, and saying, but in the meantime, uh, we have some some uh, some cash in, well not some a lot of cash in reserve. Let me internally borrow five million dollars, seven million dollars internally to go ahead and hire the design companies that we need to start the design on these projects and to do the RFP. And then when we issue the debt, we pay back our reserve. So that's probably if this. If, if any portion of that of this bond is approved, that will be my, my path, my recommended path. And the citizens, and the citizens oversight today, mm -hmm. how does that get appointed? I'm, I'm going to, so I talked to bond council today, and I was actually going to add, potentially add it as a whereas to this ordinance on, on, on the dais to say that, we're, you know, where the, you know, They'll have language accountability is important that you know the city uh, are required to make uh, oversight board some type of blah blah blah. Then they'll, the council will have to decide what are the qualifications, how many people, you know, they'll come up with a meeting schedule. Um, if you want to see something like it, you can go to Muni Code and look at um, the county. The county has one for its debt. Um, the public health trust has one. The school board has one. Um, and these are all recent issuers of, of debt. Um, so, uh, and actually big debt. You know, school board just did 1.2 million. Uh, Jackson did uh, nearly 900 million. So. And one, one last thing, I'm trying to hog the mic. I think I've heard from a lot of people, and I think you've heard from a lot of people, that this thing seems rushed. I mean, we're gonna be voted, they're voted in 60 days from now. And tonight's truly the first night at any of these sessions that numbers were really thrown up. And why, why the rush? If you don't want to do it during the, during the primary election, I understand the argument for that, that you'd rather have dedicated voters go to the polls. But why now? Why 60 days? Well, it doesn't necessarily have to be in 60 days. That's the date that 
based on the timeline working with the professionals that the council approved for me to hire, they're recommending. On the day it's on Tuesday, they can decide, you know, I don't want to do the referendum on April 24th, let's do it on May 25th, or whatever the next Tuesday election day of that month is, because we want to do a, a bigger, broader education campaign. But my reverse response to you is, why not now? This building is falling apart. The roads need to be fixed, it needs to happen. Our sustainability needs to be moving, right? Okay, so, okay, so I've, been wanting to, I've been wanting to speak and you said my name. So the best thing I heard tonight was about how Brickell is flooding and you observed that. And I look at this and I just think we are in a, an absolute slow motion catastrophe. It's happening so slowly, people are just beginning to wake up to it. But I see the numbers up there and it's horrifying for what we have to take on in the future. So when we have the real flooding event that is coming, do these numbers change as obvious priorities change? We will. Like, for example, also, I didn't see anything that's... Can I ask you your basic question first? Should I finish, I finish so quickly? Okay, none of the projects seem to generate revenue. So I'm wondering why there's nothing up. It's just all spend, spend, spend. But I don't see anything up there that says, and this project will make this much money, like if we go to water plant or did a multi-use tower for City Hall and made money off of it. It's like, it's just all spend money, but we don't make any money. Okay. You, you, you pivoted to a whole other subject coming. My, my friend and colleague, Ed Marquez, the deputy mayor of the county, who was also my financial advisor when I was at the city of Miami. When asked what is the largest single issue that the county has, the chief financial officer of the county said sea level rise. Yeah. Okay? So guess what that means? It is important. But the same way you save to buy a new car or something that you need or may want, you don't necessarily, here's the here's the $50,000 for the new Volvo the first day. Sometimes you got to save for it and you got to build up to it. We're taking steps and we're taking some good steps. You and I might not agree on the steps or which steps to take, but we are taking steps and it takes time. Um, so, but we are getting to it. We're in, it's something that's very in the forefront of my mind as the chief administrative officer of the city the same way emergency management was on my mind two years ago. Arthur will tell you, they thought I was crazy when I said, where is the emergency management group? How are we going to be prepared for a hurricane? Did you not? But I pushed and pushed and pushed. Because of it, we've had the best response than any other city in Dade County, and this has been said to me to FEMA, to, to me personally, from FEMA. We are already poised to get all of our money reimbursed that we had to spend during the storm because we were ready. But it took me two years <coughs> to get just a small department together and not even at the zenith of where they need to be. We, we still got a long ways to go. So we are working on it. With regards to revenue generating projects, our, our the way we approached putting together the projects and stuff was based on really a capital, uh, a capital reinvestment need and not necessarily thinking about, okay, if I build a water park, we can make money with it, right? Guess what, I built a water park in the city of Miami and it, is, it does generate revenue, but it is 90% or 80% still subsidized by the general fund because it is the, the government doesn't necessarily, our, our primary focus is not to make money. It is to provide service mm -hmm. to our citizens. Yeah. That's, 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 so when you think about financial, financial conservatism, we're not supposed to assess taxes on you that's more than what we need to operate the stuff that we're supposed to be providing to you. The same way I just said, we will not issue, we will not assess you debt in any single year greater than what it requires to make a debt payment. Not a, not a penny more, not a penny more. So some of these projects as we get into the scope, we can look at 
because I know we, we're talking about entertainment space and banquet space being built into some of these some of these assets. This place is right now supposed to be revenue generated. And we rent it out for parties and things of that nature, but it's not like it's a cash cow because we don't have sufficient parking to hope to host a party. So it's something we can work on it and focus on it, but it's just not the the it's not the first concern when we're looking at what we need as a, uh, to reinvest in the city's infrastructure. Okay, Mr. Manager, Deputy Manager, thank you. I just have a couple things to point out. I've been here my whole life. We can't afford $155 million bond. There's just no no way. I don't believe the city can. And it's not $155 million. We're paying back, for, according to your numbers, $325 million so that we can give away $20 million for affordable housing. We could build a $35, $40 million city hall. We could build the Glen Margola Center into a $5 million project, the Griffin Center into a $5 million project, now we can do some technology upgrades that worth $5 million, which I think is the best thing out of this whole thing. I think it's the priority that you ought to be. But I don't believe that the city needs a massive $35 million city hall, give you a budget of maybe $10 million, and say do the best you can consolidate. This facility here does not need to be a $5 million facility. Why not just tear this down, keystone down, and just build one or two more Joe Celestine centers throughout the city. But I think the priority is wrong. And we like to use this little number of $124,000 value. Well, that's great for the average. But, Carol, across the street from your house, the people, uh, the new two-story house, they just bought it last year, their new assessed value is $1.4 million because they're based at what they said sold. They're now going to pay for this bond $4,310 a year for the next 36 years. I took a house on 131st Street that just sold and its new assessed value before it was up 98,000. The new assessed value is $310,000. Those people are gonna now get hit with a now $930 per year tax bill just on the bond debt, not even their regular property taxes. And you're only talking about a new $300,000 house that was renovated. We're all not staying in these little houses forever. We want North Miami to switch over. We want new people to move in. But when they move in, and I'll tell you as a real estate broker, people look at the taxes. And if you don't think people looking at a $2 billion house in Keystone, and they see that their tax bill is going to be $27,000, for what? And then you tell them on top of that they're getting another $6,000 on top of that? It's not, it's not going to stay. People can buy and go to so many other communities where they're not being taxed out of themselves. We had a problem trying to pass a $13 million bond for something that was worthwhile on MOCA when it was the top in the country, and we couldn't get it passed because people didn't like the funny numbers of $75 per year for a certain period of time. Now, we're at being asked to allow you to borrow up to $155 million on the whims of every future city council, you borrow forty million dollars. Nothing stops three people on that city council from deciding. You know what? We're not going to build that. I'm going to build me a seventy-five million dollar city hall, and there is nothing we could say about it, um, and, and because it's going into the uh, uh, infrastructure. If you're talking about roads and sewer and water and things like that, that might be it. And I uh, agree with uh, Howard and others that. Something should generate money. There are companies out here that will do joint ventures and build you a city hall and parking garage and put offices on top of uh, the related group. There's a lot of other groups that do joint ventures. Mayor, with, how do you know we're not looking at it? Well, you're not conveying it and you're not giving us a good reason. You just want because to Because we're here money. today, because of today, and I hate to cut you off. Well, one but, second. Well, one second. Let me, let me, no, one second. Let you, have whole, you have the whole night. I don't. Let it finish. I was just with some bankers the other day talking about CRA. They have $89 million that they say they cannot spend. These are local banks that say we have CRA money that we cannot spend. We don't have one project that this money can go on. And so when North Miami won't we'll take some of your money, they said we have this money is sitting there. We're in violation of our their rules because they're not spending their money fast enough. So I, I, 
Mary, I, I, I have okay, to stop you. Guys Mary, are doing Mary, this Mary. And, and you've known me for a long time. You've known me for a very long time. And I respect you 100 And I respect you. I don't, for you to just say what you just said, a little bit unfair. And I'm being, we're being transparent. One, you're, you're just told this audience that a bank or some banks have CRA money to spend. That CRA money has a different definition than the context of CRA that they know. And you know that. That CRA is the federal regulators on banks require banks to invest in poor areas. Invest means does not mean give you free money. It means lend money in <coughs> poor areas or build a, a, a bank branch in those areas or support maybe a, a, a little league baseball team. It is not free money, but they can also buy bonds. They can buy municipal bonds to make that CRA. You know how I know? Because that's what I did when I worked at Total Bank as the vice president. So it's, it's, it was unfair for you to say that. We, I understand everybody has an opinion on this bond, and guess what? You should. You're paying for it. But I, I want to be clear about something. Me and my administration, we're here to bring forth ideas based on directives that we receive from our bosses. So what you have here is the information that we have gathered to provide you with that information. I'm very, and you didn't, I'm glad you didn't say it. You said you referred to funny numbers with the mocha. And I'm very, very strict about that. Never accuse me of funny numbers. Previous Okay, whatever. I just, I don't like funny numbers being mentioned in a public meeting around me. Because guess what? I've been questioned about it before. And I, and I said, and I was very transparent and told you guys, I take it very serious. So have your opinion. You said something about, uh, I, don't, I don't, you said it was a 310 value, right? Yeah. 310 assessed value is $397.70 a year. You, did you just say it was 9000 No, I said it was 900 oh, I thought it was $310 per 100000 No. How much is it for 100000 this is for the year. I'd have to break it up. Oh wait, I, I wanna I wanna be respectful. There's a gentleman in the back blue shirt. Right. <laughs> Sir, you see the point of uh, high property tax increase. Uh, and you did say that you thought that everyone would be paying for this, but a large contingency of the people who reside in North Miami are renters. Uh, and they will not be paying for it and they will be benefiting from the uh, using all these different facilities and whatnot. Have we considered doing this through a sales tax, perhaps instead, where we can even get other people who just pass through North Miami, pay a little extra when they pump their gasoline, or purchase something? Would that be capable, sir? So, um, answer your question. Specific to the renters, if you're renting in a, um, a, a rental, actually, the building right behind us is a rental building. Right. Um, as, as the owners paid $95 million for it, as their tax the taxes go up, they push that tax increase and their taxes in the total to the renters. So they, they are paying, whether they own or rent, they are paying. Two, you know your renters, because they are they dwell in the city, they are voters <laughs> as well in the city. So they would, you know, not that we target renters versus owners, but so they vote. Could we do this through a sales tax? No, because we, we're not constitutionally allowed to assess that for this purpose. Um, are there other financing and capital raising schemes that we can look at? Yes, there are. We could look into doing a revenue bond, but typically the revenue, the revenue that we pledge to support, to, to support the debt has to be invested, the, the proceeds have to be invested in something um, that comes from it. So for instance, we now get surtax from the county for roadway uh, improvements. If I went, I could I could go and issue debt using that as a source of repayment, but I'd have to use the money to only fund that one category that you saw, which was citywide road improvements. Um, and I think there was a gentleman in the back earlier who asked the question, well, why don't I see water and sewer? 
our water sewer comes from our utility fund. We could, we could leverage that money, but we could only use the proceeds to do the water plan, do drain, you know, the drainage and the, and the water deal with the water distribution system. Um, the other source, and we are, we are looking at it, um, is CRA is also a source we can bond it to. And Mayor, thank you for saying this one thing. We have been meeting with the private sector. There's a lot of private sector companies that see value in the property that the city owns. And we're in serious conversations with all developers to look at possibly doing a leverage that would require them. We will give them the ability to build residential housing, mixed use retail throughout our downtown area on the properties that we own. And in exchange, they give us either a portion of the revenue or they build us the parking, public parking that we need, perhaps the city hall or some of these other facility amenities. So your administration, and you're right, I, didn't, I haven't said it, but I haven't said it because we don't have all the information yet and I don't want to get, you know, Bob will call me and sit on my desk if I don't want to have all the information really at hand. We are looking at every, every financing source. The best, you go read any bond rating report on any good municipality, highly rated municipality. Those municipalities have capital plans that are funded and unfunded. And they have multiple sources and schemes, if you will, to deal with all of those needs. Well, we're building our capital plan. And our capital plan right now is largely unfunded. And we're coming up with different different schemes to help deal with trying to finance it. And this is, this is one. And, and I, I, as long as I'm still the manager here, this ain't, this ain't the first time I've been in front of you, and it certainly won't be the last with dealing with these complex issues. You know, my first couple of months, we were dealing with both uh, par <laughs> uh, par parallel and perpendicular docking. And we, we stood in here, right? We stood right in here. And we talked, just like we did tonight. And we're going to continue talking. Uh, good questions? Uh, one thing. <laughs> we'll get you uh, the New assessed values are now going to jump to $1.4 million based on if it was a homestead property. It's going to be locked at a lower rate. You, you forget about that for a second. If you're looking at it, let's go with this current one. You let, you're stuck on the board now at 310 get the 120 that we're meeting. And you look at it $400 and pay back $320 million. You have enough room in the millage to raise the millage that charges an extra 200 of the year instead of 400, and you'll get $160 million without paying anybody any, any bonds. On the, on the operating side. So one of the financial statistics of a, a properly run city is where their millage is compared to the cap. Now, our statutory cap is 10 mills. Um, and I think you guys know our friends to the south, I don't know if they're still in trouble, but they certainly got themselves in trouble being at cl very close to that, that, that 10. We don't want to get any, you know, we don't want to get too close to that. You're, you, but you're right, we could do, we could assess that in the, op we could assess something in the operating millage um, to say, all right, we're gonna, you know, every year invest a million dollars in this project or that. We could do that. And that's what we refer to as pay as you go. And we will have in our total capital plan, we will have some pay as you go projects in there, but I would never recommend we go to, you know, the full, like two mills up on the total. Um, in fact, my first budget here, we reduced the millage by half a mill. Um, you know, because I, I, I do listen sometimes. <laughs> Ms. Brown. Yes. Uh, I would like to applaud your expertise in this. I mean, this is it's very, very important tonight. But my question is this, and we know that we have a turnover. Oftentimes, the city of North Miami, the personnel. What is going to be in place? Say, for instance, you get a New Jersey. You move on. Is there anything in place that's going to 
this, if this passes, that this money will be spent for designated, what it's supposed to be spent for. Because we could get someone else to come in, new council people, new city manager, new deputy city manager, and then we're stuck with this you know, payment, and you have all this knowledge, and we get somebody else in that doesn't know how to run a wagon. What's going to happen to us then? What's going to happen to all this money? I mean, that's my first question. The second question is this. Have you considered having a complex, someone mentioned that this at the last uh, meeting. I sit on the library board at 3.30, around 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock, we have three schools that merge. The library is inundated with children. Our children need somewhere to go. They need a facility. Have you considered building a huge complex that would accommodate the children rather than to build, you know, five million dollars here over there, Sunkist Grove. And a lot oftentimes these centers, if you ride around around two thirty, some centers they playing dominoes, the children are not there, they're not being, you know, people with feet up on the desk. It goes on. So, you know, it, it this is my question. Have you considered a huge complex rather than to build choppy complex where you know we would have a real some really good programs for the youth of North Miami? So I'll answer your second question first. Yes, yes, we have. Um, your your council people, uh, your representatives. I know they've been having individual meetings with you know one on ones or five on ones um, with different community interests. And every day last weekend, I had to prepare a bunch of reports for one of those meetings. So we're we're still getting that feedback. So yes, we could. Keep in mind though, and I know it's not it's not on the west side, but Cagney, we are moving that forward with the school board. So that's gonna be one of those kind of more centrally located, bigger facilities, and it's right there um, uh, across from North Miami Library. So that one is, that is one. Now, that one's not even being funded from this, because that one was already funded. So it's, so it's already in pipe. I answered your first question earlier. One of the things that I've participated in and been subject to, um, most of the municipalities and the county and, and the Jackson School Board, they have what is a, um, a bond oversight board. Um, so in the on Tuesday, I will be adding to this ordinance a recommendation that the council convene a bond oversight board that includes you know activist citizens. CPAs, architects, engineers, people that, that are here that have a vested interest, but also a knowledge base, so that they can ask us before we go forward with spending a dollar, each dollar, oh well, this was supposed to be this. Or well, I remember being in the in the meeting and it was supposed to be X. So where is that scope? You know, how did you get to that scope? Are you prepared to deal with the operating costs of that facility? Um, the city of Miami's bond oversight, bond oversight board had a whole package. The staff had to answer capital questions, design, and future like five-year out operating costs. What is the five-year operating cost? So that the budget director has the information so that they can start planning and being fiscally sound, fiscally accountable as a, you know, systematically and not by hacks. Oh, the light bill went up. Something that simple, the light bill for a facility. You forget the budget that you're in trouble. So yes, two yeses. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, what part do you have in explaining the current conditions of the projects that you're calling for? I'm an architect with my office in North Carolina, so I have an interest in anything, anything built. But I'm just curious. You're asking the public to vote for money. You do. Sorry, but you're, right. you're not really I'll saying. Wait, like this. Okay, sorry. You're not really saying the condition of those projects. Like, if I'm an educated voter and I want to vote, I want to know why you have to replace City Hall. Was it? Is it 50 years old? Is it? Yes. You know. So when you're asking people to vote, do you have a report on your website that says? These current community centers are X years old. It's so many square feet. The roof is leaking. 
Like, I think that it's very hard to say to someone, I want you to spend $6 million, but I'm not telling you what that money's going towards. I haven't heard anything tonight about all those improvements. The community knows when water's leaking and sewer's leaking, so they understand infrastructure. But your building program doesn't say anything about what you're building. So we, we've not, that's great, that's an excellent wow. question. Um, I don't think we have a full, what I would call a consolidated conditional report. That's something that we'd be used to. However, we do have reports and issues at individual facilities. And I'll give you a for instance. You talked about a leaky roof. The um, MOCA, to me, is one of our greatest assets. And we got a great director in there now, and she's, she's working hard. We're getting ready to have our accreditation uh, assessment team come down here. Look, one of the things we know we already have a problem with is the roof needs to be replaced because it is leaking. When that assessor comes and sees that, that's going to be a, an X, not a check. So that's something that we know. We could probably, as we go through the education process, pull some of these things together, but these projects came to be, even some of them, even before I was manager, you know, the vision of them because of the, the disrepair that some of the buildings are in, or the, uh, the over-absorbent maintenance costs it's, it's, it's we're, we're having to deal with just trying to maintain what's here. Um, I shared a story earlier, City Hall. My first six months, my entire office was drenched because we had a pipe break between floors. My entire office. So that displaced 10 people for six or seven months because of pipe break in the, in the building. Um, you know, our elevator breaks, I think weekly, you know, our basement was a fire pit. So we mitigated, we took the boxes out at least. But now, you know, you go down there, if, it, if you have a serious rain, it floods, so we got to deal with it. And we're, we're busting out of the scenes. We don't have, you know, we had to turn a closet into an office, in my office. So yeah, we, 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 do, we do know the need, and we should probably put something together. Yeah. You're only presenting the negative aspect, how much everybody has to spend, but you're not really talking about where we are. Some of that still needs to be scoped out, too. We need to sit down and say, OK, well, we're going to do 5 million. Well, 5 million may not allow us to completely tear down this building, but it will allow us to get it back to the structural bones, redo windows, plumbing, mechanical, um, a new kitchen, um, spruce up the, this, this infrastructure here, you know, the, 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 the ducts and things, because you know, maybe there's some mold in there. You know, other things to make it more viable to generate revenue. Okay. Um, just from tell I'm gonna let you be the last question. Say back you alluded to a well run you alluded to a well run city and and I know you have experience, great experience in the, the city of Miami. And it seems like the five projects that you mentioned off the top of your head were all specific individual projects. Did, were you involved in any that, that uh, the, the degradation of your infrastructure is not a surprise or anything new? Did the city of Miami have bond issues for general repairs? Did Miami Beach, did Bell Harbor, Bay Harbor, did, did much as much like us, North Miami Beach, are they calling for a bond to improve their infrastructure? Or is it that they, you know, they have grown with the times. They've allowed rebirth, whereas we have it. And now we're saddled with this. And I don't see a plan for us, once we pay for this, for going forward. You yourself said that there's only, you know, Solomia in, in your, on the horizon. And you really can't, I believe it, you really can't count on a single thing being done in this city that's going to contribute to the revenue. And it's a shame. Um, during the last few miles of the marathon a couple weeks ago, it's, it's like a whole new city. It's amazing. And I don't think any of the people that are in North Carolina, I don't think anybody goes 
beyond the, the two or three mile radius of North Miami, see what is possible and, and the revenue that it can generate and the quality of life it can generate while we're now battling it out in the churches here again and again. We're, we're just, we just create a situation where we're going to suffocate the population rather than really enhance it and, and really help it. So the question is, if this doesn't go through, can we look at other measures to have a little bit of rebirth? Where the city can, it can get money off the revenue. So the city can get additional park space from it. Well, the city will get it off the ground plane so we can avoid this flooding situation. I mean, the basic, the basic answer to your question is, of course, we're going to have to, right? <laughs> we, but we don't hear that. We, we hear we're going to go we're going to go to the well, we're going to get the money, and again, everything will be the same. Well, you Maybe said it's been well, for 50 years here. Well, this, the top, well, and I'm, I'm going to close it out. The topic you're bringing up is a multifaceted. No, nothing is myopic when it comes to municipal or county governments, particularly when it comes to finances. Um, yes, you do need new development. Yes, you, we do need to probably issue that because of how far we've allowed ourselves to go in not be investing in our assets. These are your assets. These are your minions. And then you don't get to get to the fun stuff um, of bigger, better community center that has, you know, a recording studio and a DJ academy and a dance academy and, and, and it's hard to get to those things when I just have to, I hate to say, I have to fix the freaking sidewalks. Like, this is basic stuff. Yeah. You should have been included but, in the annual budget. But it is. We do what we can with the resources that are there. But at the end of the day, if this doesn't pass, yeah, me and Arthur and the team, we go back to the well, we figure something else out. I told you, it's not the end, you know, I want, I'll, I'll, I'll go on record right now. For everyone to hear, I believe in this this capital this capital financing. Um, if allowed to do it, I assure you, for as long as I'm here, and I will make sure it is it is done properly. It is regulatorily sound. It is engineering efficient. It is everything that it needs to be in order to meet the concerns of of all of you. Um, no, I can't guarantee I'm going to be here forever, nor Arthur, unless Councilwoman wants to go ahead and sign that contract. <laughs> that limit is not true. <laughs> but no, you're not there for it. You do, you do what you can and get done what you're done. I, I've said this in the past in public meetings. If you guys approve this, I assure you, and I hate to say it because I love working this job, um, I won't be here to see everything happen. It's just the nature of the beast. It's the nature of the beast. Me and Sori have been working together. Hopefully he'll get to finish finish it up. Um, you know, a lot of the employees here, you guys certainly will be here to help finish it up. But right now we need to take we need to take the first step at least. We need to take a step, a, a progressive step. Um, and trust. Trust that we're gonna do the right thing. You know, I've been working here for two years doing the right thing. I've been getting beat up a little bit along the way, but I've been doing the right thing. I don't, I do not back away from any statement from Annie or Bob. I listen, I, I take it, I'm here. And, I, and I'll give you my answers, I'm, I'm here, I'm open, but I, I want you guys to trust this council, I want you to trust this administration, we need this. We really need this. Um, so. you know, you're doing a good job, and I know these, these are the cards that you've been dealt. I know what you're facing. I think what Mr. Prevotel was saying, and I've been in the city for 40 years, and since 1980, we just been stuck. We're a town that's living in the past. No to development, no to high rise, no to density, no to anything. If we had the tax base like North Miami Beach is doing right now, they're, they're at Warren tax and up by 27%, we wouldn't be in this position. But if we keep saying, no, we're not going to have high rises, no to development, here we are doing a bond issue. And I applaud you for trying to do the best you can with what you have. Thank you. So real quick, we want to show you again. So if you look at the page, all the way at the top, this is our home page. 
the know me bonds, you click that to see all the information that we brought over tonight. So you see the click there? Yes. And it takes you to the page. Financial documents, the public meetings, uh, a tape of this meeting or video yes. or something will be on the website shortly. Um, and again, I thank you guys for coming out tonight. And all the way at the bottom of this page, there is an email address. Right there. Right there. Right there. Nomi is the email address that you can email questions and concerns to at any time. And that's on the bottom page. But all of our meetings that we've had are there. I believe sign-in sheets are there. Everything that we've done for all of our public meetings is on the website. The videos are there. Um, I know we have a, we've had a, a problem with the last video. We're working on that from the last meeting. Uh, but the videos are there from the other meetings and all the papers. And you can email us if you have any questions. And you can call if you get us something. Well, you'll get me on the phone before you'll get the manager on the phone. But I will answer the phone. All right. Thank you guys. Uh, Carol, do you think? I just thank everybody for coming tonight. Um, I'm available for questions. You can call me and call them how to get a hold of me. Uh, I know that the manager has said he will speak to anybody, or he will speak to anybody. So, any additional questions, uh, give me a call or shoot me an email. And thank you for participating. Thank you so much to staff and our management for taking the time this evening.